All right, hey there, sixth and seventh grade. So I just wanted to go ahead and do one more kind of video update. I think at this point, you guys have pretty much gotten everything under control. I think a lot of you have figured out where to go to turn in your artwork and how to watch the video lessons. And now that we've swapped over to the Google Classroom, I think it's been a lot easier for a lot of you. So that's good. I'm glad to see that more of you are participating and actively turning in your artwork so that's perfect keep it up for those of you that are doing such an amazing job with your artwork um, some of you turn in your work and it's absolutely beautiful and you are doing an incredible job you are definitely impressing me so please don't give that up if you get that 100 you are definitely earning that 100 on your artwork um, for those of you that are still struggling to watch the video lessons please make sure that you are sitting down you are actively reading and actively watching the lessons that are provided for you if you are guessing or if you are skipping to the end of the video and just drawing what you see you will not be getting full credit on your drawings um, there's just no reason for it you could sit down you could watch another video while watching the tutorial and be drawing along with it and still be doing a better job than some of the work that I've been seeing from some of you. Not from all of you, but some of you, because there's just no reason for you not to be watching the lessons at this point. So please make sure you're staying up to date with your lessons. Please make sure you're staying up to date with your work. I know it's a lot of work. I know that you guys are getting tons of work right now from other classes, and I know it's difficult to manage your time, but please don't forget that if you spend at least just like one hour a day just like in our normal classes on your artwork, you will have plenty of time to do and turn in your work and still get a great grade. So if you just spend one hour a day on your work, some of your work won't even take an hour, please just make sure that you are spending your class time that you should be spending on your artwork. I will never give you over that amount of work, so that's good. Usually I give you a lot of days and that's a lot of time to be finishing your artwork. Other than that, um, I hope you enjoy this lesson. This one's a little bit more difficult, so please make sure you're watching the lesson that I give for you. And I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Again, if you have any questions, you can always come to my office hours as well, or email me or ask me a question on the Google Classroom too. Okay, I hope you guys are all staying safe and I'll talk to you later. Bye guys. So for this drawing, all you all need is a piece of paper, um, any kind of paper, preferably not lined paper, preferably just plain white paper, printed paper is fine as well, um, a ruler and a pencil to start with. Later on, you'll be coloring these, but right now, this is all you need to start. So what I'm doing is I'm folding my paper in half, and then I'm going to go ahead and fold my paper in half again the other way. And what this will do is this will create a line so that I know exactly where the center of my drawing is when I'm ready to start the drawing portion of it. So now I'm going to go and grab my ruler and I'm just going to re-mark where that center is of my paper. So I'm just giving myself another kind of line just to show me where the center will be. And I'm just going all the way across with my little ruler. And you can do the same for this so you know where you'll be drawing on. Next, I'm going to designate where I want my two vanishing points to go. They'll go just close to the edge of the paper, but not exactly on the edge. It's just about a few centimeters in from the edge of the paper. And remember, we're doing two point perspective. So now we need two vanishing points. Now I will go down and draw a line in the center of my paper. So this is why we fold the paper previously so we know exactly where the center is going vertically and horizontally. And so now this time I'm just drawing my line up and down so I know exactly where that center will be. Next I am drawing two little marks about an inch in on the paper. This is where I'm going to stop my name drawing went from top it, touching the top and from touching the bottom. So you should have four marks right now. 
you should have two vanishing points and two marks at the top and one one at the top and one at the bottom to know where you will stop drawing your name. Now I'm going to take my ruler and kind of connect those marks together. So from the vanishing point, from the little mark that I made there, to the mark back to the vanishing point and so on, and what it will create is some type of a diamond-like shape. Now that we have our diamond shape, I am going to flip over the paper, and I suggest you guys do this as well. I am drawing out my name, the name that I'm going to be drawing on my paper, and I am going to figure out how I'm going to lay out my letters so that it fits perfectly in that little diamond shape. I have an odd number of letters in my name, so the E is the middle letter. The A and the L will go on the left side, B will go in the middle and the X and the A will go on the right side. Now if you have an even number of letters in your name, for example, I'll draw out the name Julian just to give you guys an idea. So it's J-U-L-I-A-N would be Julian. Now if you have an even number like this name does, you can draw a line down the center and figure out where the middle will be. So the J-U-L will be on the left side and the I-A-N will be on the right side of the diamond. But for right now, since I have an odd number, I'll keep my E in the center. So what I mean by in the center is right on where that line is down the middle of my paper will be my center. So now will be the drawing portion of our name. And I'll leave some references for you in your lesson so that you have some references to be able to look at some block lettering, some different kinds of fonts. Um, that's not something I can really teach you. Just doing a block lettering or a bubble lettering is something that you kind of have to practice and play around with, but I'll at least leave you some references that you can take a look at how to do those. And so as you can see, I already planned out where I want my letters to go on the top there. For the most part, I think I moved the E around a little bit, but now I am just taking my ruler and I am making my lines for my letters as straight and even as possible. And again, you might have to erase a few times depending on if you like where the shape is or if you like where it's located or if you want a letter to be bigger or smaller in the space. It's kind of up to you. I think I actually changed this A around a little bit at the end, which that's fine. It's going to be up to you in the long run but what I'm doing first is just kind of making my letters a little bit thicker so creating that block lettering and that's all a block letter is is making your letters thicker again I'm using a ruler to make sure that my lines are nice and straight the whole point of doing a two point or one point perspective drawing is making sure that you have straight lines or else the effect just doesn't really work as well as it should. Um, so please make sure you're using either a straight edge or some kind of a ruler during this project. So now I'm going to move on to my L. My L is just a straight line down. And what's going to happen with the bottom of my L is that it's just, I'm not going to go straight with it. I'm actually just going to let it go down towards that bottom point, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So instead of a natural L where the bottom line would be horizontal on the page, I'm letting my L kind of fall down and go along with the shape of the uh, diamond. So I'm letting it go, kind of droop down until it kind of hits the end of the diamond. So now the same thing will happen with my E. I'm just drawing the, the thick part of the kind of spine of the E. And then the top line will go naturally down with the diamond 
because it is in two point perspective so I have to draw that guy going along with the diamond and I'm actually measuring a, it up with that vanishing point and I'll do the same for the bottom piece bringing it down a little bit more and then I will go towards the vanishing point now the top and the bottom piece don't go all the way to the vanishing point because that would be unnatural and it wouldn't look like an E then so I have to end where the E will naturally end and don't forget that little middle piece too Now obviously if you have a longer name, name, you're going to want to kind of get your letters a little bit smaller in the space. Again, it's going to come with mapping out how and where you want your letters to go. So you're going to have to plan this piece out a little bit more than someone with a shorter name like myself will have to do. So now the easy part is over and we have our letters, which they should be taking up a good majority of the space. It should be even, you should have an even number on your left side as you do on your right side. Now we have to work with our two vanishing points. So whatever letters are on the left hand side, so my A and my L, those letters will go towards the right vanishing point. So whatever letters are on whatever side, they'll go towards the opposite vanishing point. And before we keep going, I actually want to explain what I mean by that. Um, what I mean by going towards those two vanishing points is that to make your letters look 3D, we need to have that kind of side piece. Just like with our 3D shapes, we need to have the side and the front and all the different sides of our shape. So for example, my R, if you look at the front one right here, the R is, the front of it is going to the left. But the side of it, if you see that lighter part, is going towards the right vanishing point. So now I drew you some lines to show you where we need to draw our edges to touch from the R to connect to the vanishing point. So every point that you see on the letter needs to go straight over to that vanishing point. So coming back to our drawing, as you can tell, the top of my A, I already drew, and I'm talking about the left A, I already drew a little tiny line that is leading down towards that vanishing point. And now I'm taking the bottom of my A. See how I'm touching that point there at the bottom of the A? And even though you can't see it that much, it still needs to go all the way over to that vanishing point. Now because the side, you can kind of just stop it because you don't need your letters to go all the way over. You can draw a line on the side going down to kind of end where the A will go. So again, you're just making 3D letters, but the whole point is so that you're 3D part goes towards those points. So now the left part of my A, the front part, the little bottom piece needs to have a little line going over towards the vanishing point as well. So I drew, and I was just kind of eyeing it, how close it would be to go towards that vanishing point. And then I'm just cutting it off. So I'm just creating the back of the A, the side of the A behind that front. So as you can see, I went to go get a bigger ruler. I would definitely suggest that if you have a longer ruler to use something that's a little bit longer because it's easier for yourself and it becomes a little bit more precise if you're using something a little bit longer. So now I'm going into my L and again, I'm taking that top part, leading it down to the vanishing point, taking this little kind of where the L bends, leading that to the vanishing point and then the edge of the bottom little bend pushing that over to the vanishing point and then the very very bottom point will go over as well now i need to draw my line to end where the l 
will stop so that the L doesn't go on forever. And I need to do that to the side here and the bottom part. And there we go. So we have a 3D A and a 3D L. And let's take a look at the E next. Now, if things weren't confusing before, they could get a little bit more confusing now. Um, because my E, is, the majority of it is on the right hand side, now my points of my E need to go to the left hand vanishing point. So remember, I said any letters on the right will go to the left vanishing point. Any letters on the left will go to the right vanishing point. So I drew my line that was connecting to the vanishing point. Now I'm going to end the top of my E so it doesn't go on too long. Now because the center one, you don't really see any lines behind that little middle piece, we can move on to the bottom one. Just drawing the lines of my, from my point over and then ending where my E will be. And I'm going to let the last letters kind of play through a little bit faster. Um, I know this is a little bit of a longer video and it's a more challenging one. So again, please don't feel like you're alone in this. If you need help by any, any, any time, you can come talk to me, you can email me, you can come to my office hours. I know this isn't challenging. Please don't spend four hours in one day working on this piece. You have plenty of time to finish this. The final one won't be due until next week sometime. So please just work on it a little bit every day. If you get frustrated, stop so that you don't get overwhelmed with this project. You don't have to color yet. We'll color in the next video, but please just take your time. I know it's a little frustrating. So if you need help, always definitely come talk to me so I can help you out with it. And take your time. Have fun with it. I'll talk to you guys in the next one, okay?